So I've lived pretty close to St. Louis for like my entire life. And turns out there's a lot of really cool places to do some toy hunting around there. Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today is a toy hunting video, but we're gonna present this a little bit differently because recently I went to visit my good friend Mike, and I specifically went there because we were gonna check out his amazing Masters of the Universe collection. Spoiler alert for a future video. But while I was there hanging out with Mike, he wanted to take me around to do some toy hunting. And of course, I am never going to pass up on an opportunity to check out some of the local toy hunting spots. So we're going to hit up several locations around the St. Louis area in today's video. And we're going to check out what all of these different places have to offer when it comes to toy collecting. We started our day at the Belleville Flea Market. Now, I have heard about the Belleville Flea Market quite often i have never been and i don't know why i've never actually gone to this apparently they hold it once per month and they just recently started back up after of course all the shutdowns that's been happening over the past two years so it was really cool getting to check out this flea market because while this is a full-on outdoor indoor flea market turns out there are quite a few toy vendors there so let's check out the event so immediately walking into this flea market, I just loved how much stuff was just scattered around all about. There was such a weird variety of different types of toys, vintage and newer and retro. It was really, really cool to see. And pretty much right away, I came across this Coleco Pac-Man arcade. However, $45 price tag, but as you can see, it is beat up. I mean, all the stickers are peeling. Who knows if this thing works? These are really, really cool, but really couldn't justify picking it up for that price. This is a giant mech suit thing. 13. That's rad. Yeah, this is amazing, dude. Oh, how about some spawn action? This packaging is really beat up. You can tell it's been sitting out in the sun, but hey, you can always open it up. And just some really fun things laying around here. Look, we got Wii accessories. We got a Pee Wee Herman, a talking Pee Wee Herman, just with baseball mitts piled on top of him. And uh, then Mike showed me these TMNT rad rollers. That's pretty rad to see. Still in the package. I love it. Oh, so this is pretty cool. So this is a Nerf table hockey game. I don't know if any of you ever had this or remember seeing it, uh, but it's a pretty neat piece. And you can see the box is a little faded and a little old, uh, but I did pry the box open and it looks like everything is in there. Instead of having a board, you would essentially strap this thing to your own kitchen table and you would play air hockey on it. You could definitely tell it's been used, but still it's pretty cool to see. Snake Mountain. Yeah, right? It's got one bridge. One bridge. Oh, look, it's got one of the shackles yeah, is up there. Some stuff too. Yeah. Snake. Oh, both bridge pieces are in here. The snake, the door. Yeah, that's actually in pretty good shape. Oh, now this is cool. This is a Play School McDonald's playset. Look at the inside. Look, there's a baggie, and it looks like we got all these little figures in there. There's trays of food, all kinds of fun accessories. Uh, this thing is, well, this is pretty cool. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, you got a KFC. You got a KFC. I got a McDonald's. Oh, yeah, here we go. We got to see the KFC, too. That's so cool. That's amazing. All right, so check it. Astro Nix, you guys remember these? Also, I love the little mountain that they're displayed on there. I always love that sort of stuff for displaying your action figures. Oh, yes. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie figures from McDonald's. Those are actually pretty cool. 
Lots of carded figures hanging up here. Gotta love those old Toy Biz figures. I'm a huge fan of those. And hey, some 2012 Turtles up there as well. And this little transforming robot caught my eye. I thought he was pretty neat looking. I loved the shiny decals until I realized that he was clearly missing his bird head. Oh, this is pretty cool. This is an old Toy Island toy line uh, that was called Video Command. Pretty cool stuff. And then right next to that is one of the Bandai Thundercats figures from the 2011 series. Uh, you don't actually see those out and about too often anymore. It's pretty cool seeing them out here. Check it out, Kooky Cucumber with her friend, Mr. Potato Head. This is one of the original Mr. Potato Head toys from the 1960s, and it's rubber banded up. I didn't open it up to see what was inside, so I have no idea if it's complete, but the box says it came with Cucumber and Potato Head, so that's pretty neat. Got an older Buzz Lightyear figure here. Interesting checkered racing design. But hey, look what's behind him. The amazing TMNT Sewer Home playset from the 2012 series. I can't believe this playset is 10 years old now. It is still so cool. Jeffrey's Toy Factory. This would have been a Toys R Us exclusive Play-Doh set. Uh, probably in the 80s. Pretty cool. Uh... Baby brother, tender love, it's a boy. A, a real boy. So I get super nostalgic for Micro Machines. I had both of these little aircraft carriers. I need to find my old Micro Machines and do a video someday. And 2000 X-Series Masters figures carded. Battle Glove Man at Arms is one I don't see out and about too often. That's pretty sweet. And we even got a vintage Manny Faces up here. And a whole tub filled with LJ and WWF figures. Uh, this whole tub, they were marked $10 a figure. That's actually pretty good. Jesse the Body's in here. You saw Fink. And we've even got $5 Hasbros in a little bin right next to it. Um, nothing super you know, valuable, but still, I think that's a pretty good deal for both sets of these wrestling figures in these tubs right here. Always fun to see them. And Dino Riders Thermos. That is pretty sweet. So this show had a ton of retro gaming stuff too. Uh, this Nintendo power set really kind of caught my eye. It's just, I love seeing stuff like this. Uh, nice box that had the power pad in there with the NES and lots and lots of retro games. I didn't do any digging through any of the games, uh, but I was pretty blown away by just how many there were at this show. Just found something that is definitely coming home with me at this show. <laughs> and look at this. There's a whole pile of random weirdos here. I love this giant Hulk. I mean, he's all twisted up, but I love him. He's huge. That's a pretty cool figure. And this weird little neon green shark. Really interesting. And when I looked at the bottom of his foot, I found out he's from the Monster Jam, like monster truck toys. I thought that was pretty cool. I'd never seen that before. And here's a bin of Paw Patrol and Peppa Pig toys. One day when today's kids are 40 years old, those are the figures that they're going to be nostalgic for. They're going to be hunting those down.
So it was a pretty cool event. It's definitely something I'm going to be going back to a little more often if I ever have the opportunity to do so. Again, it's not that far for me to travel. So definitely as long as I've got open time on my schedule, I want to go back to this place and start checking it a bit more regularly. I didn't come away with anything super spectacular. On the way out, though, I did grab this awesome... 5.5 uh, little luchador guy. He's awesome. You guys know I love this sort of thing. Um, so I didn't really spend a lot of money, but that's okay. I did see a lot of cool stuff. Now from the Belleville flea market, we're heading over to a shop called I Had That, uh, which is such a perfect name for a toy shop. Now this is really unique because it actually shares space with a sports memorabilia place as well. So when you first walk in, that's all you see. But if you continue to the back of the store, Turns out it's kind of a toy heaven back there. As soon as I walked in, I just really noticed this whole row of retro lunch boxes. And I thought that was so cool to see. Uh, you can see there's some of the old school Star Wars tin lunch boxes up there. Look at that James Bond. King Kong. These are really nice. Now, they were all appropriately priced. They weren't cheap but they were still really neat to look at. Lots of carded figures hanging up on the walls here. A lot of 90s stuff, uh, but there's some really cool gems in there like this uh, Bola Bomber from the Robin Hood line in the box. You could use that for your Ewok village if you want to use it for that instead. So that's pretty neat to see. Hey. Hey, come look over here. Nope, up a little bit. Yes, yes, it's me. It's time to freeze. Hilltop Alpha. Now this looks pretty sweet. Uh, what does this say here? Missing some pieces may have broken pieces and could have extra pieces? Okay. But you know what? These things are really cool. And again, like I said earlier, these are great for displaying action figures on too. Ah, so while I was looking at all that stuff, I realized that Mike was overlooking in this case where all the real goodies are. <laughs> Lots of vintage Masters of the Universe stuff. Check that out. The Hasbro Cops and Crooks line. Thundercats figures. We got a Thunder Tank tucked away back there. Uh, and then as we move across here, look at these mask vehicles. Holy cow. We've got a Castle Grayskull back there. We've got a Fright Zone. It does have some broken parts on there. It looks like that tree always breaks. It's very brittle. Uh, in front of that, we've even got another Snake Mountain. So lots of Motu playsets we're seeing today, including the Crystal Falls playset from the Princess of Power toy line. No, 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 no. What is this? Um, I cannot imagine any kid was asking for this. Yikes. Cabbage Patch Kids Hide and Seek game? Well, I hope this isn't played like a whack-a-mole. Ugh. Ah, uh, old Toy Biz Marvel Legends figures, including this human torch that has the poster instead of the comic book. I always love seeing these old Toy Biz Marvel Legends figures. Really brings back memories. And the 90s threw up on this wall. 
seriously, man. I mean, look at this. All of these spawn figures, and you got the wildcats in here. Uh, it's pretty amazing. I gotta be honest, though. I kind of dig this John Carter from Mars that was part of the uh, Tarzan toy line. It's it, I don't know. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> Oh yeah, speaking of the 90s, here is all of these Playmates, Star Trek figures, and a couple Galoob ones too. Um, but there is a ton of them here, and they're super affordable. These were all priced at $5.99, and I know I've said this a whole bunch, I'll say it again. This is a line that is easy to collect, it's affordable, and it's a really good toy line. Oh hey, Kenner Terminator figures here too. Sweet! So here's something that really sent off my nostalgia trigger. Holy cow, look at these old bone-crunching action WWF figures. The Headbangers, the Godwins, we got Mark Marrow and Sable there. We had the new Blackjacks were in there. Man, I had all of these, seriously. Uh, we, we, over here, we're like, we got The Undertaker. We've got Mankind and Kane. Oh my gosh, I still remember the day I bought that set from Toys R Us. I was way into these toys in the late 90s. I had so many of them during the Attitude Era, and it's so amazing seeing all of these on the show here this particular set right here the off the mat set with the four champions and we got the three faces of foley set this stuff is just retro nostalgia goodness for me So I saw a lot of really great things at this shop. Again, I didn't really pick up anything that spectacular. I've really been trying to only buy things or spend money when I find things that are really thrilling, or really something that's a hole in my collection. Uh, but I did pick up a hardback uh, vintage Masters of the Universe storybook, The River of Ruin. I love collecting some of this merchandise for Masters, and this is one of the books I did not have yet. So moving on from I Had That, we are going over to Saga Toys. Now this is a full-on toy shop, which is really, really cool. So let's check it out. So immediately walking in to Saga Toys, the Razor Crest was right there on display. So this is the new HasLab Razor Crest, and the owner of the store was building this amazing diorama right out of the Mandalorian. So not only was this my first time seeing the Razor Crest, I also got to admire the beautiful work of this diorama. He also showed us that he was starting work on a Masters of the Universe diorama in the back of the store here. You can see this mega Castle Grayskull he built using shells from multiple vintage Castle Grayskull playsets. And he's also got a Fright Zone and some Snake Mountains. He's planning to do the same thing there. He's eventually going to set this all up as one gigantic Eternia display that he could put figures on or whatever. It'll make just a huge diorama on this back wall of the store. I can't wait to come back one day and see this thing completed. So this store is big and it's open and it's really nicely laid out. I was really impressed by just the size of the aisles and oh, hey. I found Masters of the Universe stuff right away. A lot of carded 2000X figures, which is really cool. I, I've recently said that I don't run into these as often anymore, but I might have to change that because I feel like they're starting to pop up a little bit more often. Probably because Motu has been so popular lately, people are digging these things out and actually trying to sell them again. We got some vintage figures too, like, hey, there's a Peach Armor Mechanic, which is pretty sweet. And I also really admire the little custom boxes he used to sell his loose figures. I think those look really great. We've also got some baggy loose figures hanging up on the wall here. We got some Rotons down here. You can see a, a pretty good assortment of figures that don't have any accessories, but always nice to fill in some gaps in your collection. 
We got a whole wall of more loose stuff here, too. You can see more of those cool boxes. You can see some vehicles down below that. We've even got some of the modern stuff over there. Uh, we've also got a bunch of the Super 7 reaction figures here, in case you need to fill in some gaps for that collection. And in the case below that, we even got some of the NECA Staction figures. Now, uh, there's also Fisto from the 2000X line. He's a bit of a rare one. And honestly, all of these Staction's have gotten pretty pricey over the years and these you definitely don't run into that often anymore so kind of cool just to see them those Alvin and the Chipmunks really caught my eye, but look right below that. We've got a great selection of TMNT figures, and again, with the awesome custom boxes for all of his loose, complete figures. There's a really great selection of those in there, and they just really pop on the shelves with those cool like brick wall backgrounds behind the figures. I think that's such a great way to put those on the shelf. We got some real rarities down here, too. We got these great cycles from the Next Mutation lineup, something that you don't see out in the wild too often. And I love this vintage Leo Sewer Force sword. I always thought this was a cool piece, but it's always been weird to me that it's like got a snake on the sword. I don't really know why that is, but it's still a really neat roleplay piece from the early vintage line. Oh, there's everybody's favorite turtle, Venus. Yep, she's down there. But we've also got some other great carded TMNT figures from the original toy line down here as well. Uh, some of these are really nice ones. I mean, there's a Shogun Mikey right there, which is pretty great. And, um, you know, they're all priced pretty appropriately for what I see these types of figures going for these days. Uh, PandaCon's a great one, too. So love me some TMNT, of course. Hey, we got a great Ghostbusters display here. We got a firehouse, got the sign. Looks like pretty much everything is there, although I don't know if the containment unit is over there. But you can see a great little assortment of Ghostbusters figures alongside of it there. Oh, and an entire aisle of Power of the Force figures in case you were needing any of those. Or if you weren't needing any of those, how about another entire aisle of Playmate Star Trek stuff? <laughs> Or maybe you need Toy Biz Marvel figures. They have tons of those as well. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be honest here. I've always kind of wanted this Fire and Ice set. Not necessarily for that torch, but I think that Iceman looks really rad. So my son is a huge Ben 10 fan, so I kind of geeked out when I found out that there was an entire wall of loose Ben 10 figures. Uh, I'm really going to have to bring Spencer back here one day to check these out because I think he will probably lose his mind over seeing all of these. I was really impressed with the size and the scope of the store and the really great selection found within. It's a nice shop that's got quite a bit going on and definitely another one that I will need to add to my loop. After we left the awesome Saga Toys, we are heading on over to one more shop called Retro TV Toys. Uh, this is a great little shop. Uh, it's funny because it's kind of opposite from what we just saw with Saga Toys, where it was like really big and kind of wide open with these big aisles. And uh, Retro TV Toys is much more crammed in. It's in a small shop, but I love that. I think that is so incredibly cool. And I love seeing both types of toy shops. So there's definitely a lot of cool things in here that's crammed into this little space so we can do some digging, which is sometimes the most fun. Oh, let's dive right in on this baggied wall right here because they've got Centurions. Uh, I don't see these very often at all, and these all look like they're complete. Um, there are, you know, attachments and weapons, and their helmets are all at the bottom of the baggies here. Now, they are a little pricey as that toy line has gone way up in value over the years, but still very cool to see them. Oh, it's me. It's just, uh, it's just my head, though. I got spider legs. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, sweet. Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Uh, I like that line. <laughs> How about some of these Tiger Electronic handhelds? 
you know, I really love this shot because there's just so much going on. And I kind of love that there's this wide variety of random pieces, especially on some of these back shelves in the store here. Oh, here's a whole bunch more of the Super 7 reaction figures. You know, I believe these were all sold as blind bags and cases, so they've got them all opened up for you, so if there's any holes you need to fill out, you can grab those. Also, lots of mini comics and rotons and a bunch of loose Motu figures also hanging up in this shop. Oh, and more Robin Hood goodness. Awesome. Ooh, the original Fireball Island board game. That is definitely a rarity and definitely cool to see. And there's a lot of goodies up here. Look at that. We've got the original Power Rangers Power Dome playset with the box. Some cool stuff floating around up there. And I really love this. There's this entire wall that says everything that's got an orange sticker is only $4. So there's a great variety of random things in all of these baggies here. Uh, you can see there's TMNT. There's lots of Masters of the Universe. Now, while I was sorting through it, obviously most of these things are going to have no accessories. In some cases, some of the figures were even like missing parts. You can see there's a broken stink ore in there, a few broken figures. Figures, but there's definitely some good things in here that you could add to your collection with for only $4, especially if you're just looking for little pieces to fill in a hole, or if you need that Stratos that's got Skeletor's arms for some reason. Um, it's a pretty cool wall with, you know, a low price point. My buddy, my buddy, wherever I go, he goes, my buddy. My buddy. <laughs> Whoa, hey, nostalgia blast. This is one of those things I forgot existed until I saw it because I totally had this basketball hoop, this Larry Bird basketball hoop when I was a little kid. That is pretty amazing. Ah, look, it's me, and you don't have me in your collection, and I've got an orange dot, so I'm only $4. You need to add me to your collection because I'm cool. <laughs> There's a lot going on in this little shop, and I think that is so cool. Everything from G.I. Joe to Transformers to Marvel, uh, lots of Star Wars and Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers. There's a lot of cool things crammed into this little store, and it's actually a lot of fun just kind of sifting through, especially with all these baggy things hanging on the pegs, like sorting through all of them and seeing what little treasures you can find. Retro TV Toys, another great shop. Definitely another one I'm going to add to my list for when I'm in the area to always check in on. Didn't get anything too crazy there, but I did walk away with another Arnie Mr. Freeze that I didn't already have. I have a weird obsession. And, I mean, come on, he was four bucks. He's, he's awesome. And he makes me happy. And that is what toy collecting is all about, my friends. So there you go, that is my toy hunt in the St. Louis area. We checked out several locations. I had an absolute blast checking all of these shops out. So I wanna give a good shout out to my buddy Mike and also his buddy Mikey who came with us as well. I had a great time hanging out with these guys and checking things out. After we got done with all the toy hunting, we went back over to Mike's house to check out his amazing collection of vintage Masters of the Universe variants. So you guys want to stick around because we're going to be checking that out in detail in an upcoming video. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining me for another toy hunting episode. These are some of my absolute favorite videos to produce. I have so much fun checking out all of these locations, uh, you know, trying to bring awareness to some of these smaller toy stores so that you guys can check them out as well. So thank you guys so much for always tuning in, for leaving comments, and of course, special shout out to all of my supporters over at Patreon. You guys are all amazing and very much appreciated. Until next time, my friends.